look at a few applications of this addition rule. So, suppose we have a customer who goes to a clothing store and we know that somebody gives us the following information that the person can purchase a shirt with a probability of 0.3. This is a clothing store. The customer will purchase a pant with a probability of 0.2 and will purchase both a shirt and a pant with probability 0.1. So, the question asked is what proportion of customers purchases neither a shirt nor a pant that is the question that is being asked. So, if I am a shopkeeper, I would be interested in knowing the proportion of customers who visit me who will make no purchase. So, how do I translate this problem to what we have learned so far? So, first step is to identify the information as events. So, let us identify the events. So, the first event is let me denote that event by S. So, what is S? S is the event of a customer purchasing a shirt. Now, if the shopkeeper is certain that every person who enters the shop will make a purchase, there is no uncertainty here. But we all know that when a customer enters a shop, they might buy a shirt, it is not will buy a shirt. So, there is that element of uncertainty and this I am denoting by S is the event of a customer purchasing a shirt and what is given to us this the probability with which a customer buys a shirt is 0.3. Similarly, the next event is the event of a customer purchasing a pant, I know probability of S is 0.3. Similarly, what is given to me is the probability a customer purchases a pant is given to me as 0.2 and some other information that is given to me is the probability that a customer would purchase both a shirt and a pant. Now, this information a shirt and a pant can be captured by S intersection P. Now, this is what is most important that is we are translating an information from a situation in real life, we are abstracting it to a mathematical expression. What is the mathematical expression? S intersection P is the event that a shirt and a pant is being purchased and that probability is given to be 0.1. So, this is what is given to us. What is needed now is, so I am given probability of S is equal to 0.3, probability of P is equal to 0.2 and probability of S intersection P equal to 0.1. This is the information that is given to us. We are interested in knowing the proportion of customers or probability that a customer does not make a purchase. In other words, it per neither a shirt or a pant. Now, what is the expression that can be used to capture this? Now, recall either a shirt or a pant either A or B is captured by S union P, either shirt or pant is captured by a operation union. So, neither a shirt nor a pant is the complement of this event. So, either a shirt or a pant is the union of this event neither a shirt or a pant is the complement of the event either shirt or pant. E so, what we seek to answer this is probability of S union P complement. Now, these are crucial observations and these are the crucial things that you need to know. Nobody is going to give us 
find out probability of S union P complement directly. We need to understand that given the problem this is what is being asked or this is what is being sought. Once we pose a problem in this framework then we apply the laws of probability or the axioms of probability to come up with the answer. So, what is that that we seek? We seek probability of S union P complement. Now, I know the probability of a complement is 1 minus probability of S union P. This is what we have just derived a few minutes before. So, what is probability of S union P? So, we first ask the question are S and P disjoint? What do we mean by that? Is does a person who buy a shirt does not buy a pant and vice versa the answer is no because I have a probability of a person who could buy both a shirt and pant. So, the event of purchase of shirt and pant together can happen hence they are not disjoint events. So, the next thing is if they are not just disjoint I know from the additive rule of probability this is probability of S plus probability of P minus probability of S intersection P. Now, I have all these 3 probabilities. I know probability of S is 0.3, I know probability of P is 0.2, I know probability of S intersection P is 0.1. Hence, I can just plug in those values to get 0.3 plus 0.2 minus 0.1 which is a 0.4. Hence, I can say that the probability of a customer or the proportion of customers who purchase neither a shirt or a nor a pant is 1 minus 0.4 which is 0.6 because this is the probability I was seeking here. Hence, this is the answer is 0.6. What I want you all to understand here is typically in real life situations this is the situation that is given to us. From this situation we abstracted and put it in a mathematical format or a framework by identifying what were the events and what is it in terms of the probability of which set are we seeking. Once we post it in this format, we realize that this probability of complement is 1 minus probability of S union P. We applied the addition rule to find out the probability here and then we got the probability of S union P complement through the complement rule. So, this is what we need to train ourselves to first identify what is given in a problem and pose it in the mathematical framework and then tell it in the language that is sought after find out what is being asked that is extremely important. Now, let us look at another example. This is an example which students would relate to. So, I have a student who has a 40 percent chance of receiving an a grade in statistics, a 60 percent chance of receiving an A grade in mathematics and an 86 percent chance of receiving an A in either statistics or mathematics. I repeat this student has a 40 percent chance of receiving an A grade in statistics, a 60 percent chance of receiving an A grade in mathematics but an 86 percent chance of receiving an A in either statistics or mathematics. What is being asked in this question? What is the probability that the student does not receive an A grade in either statistics or mathematics? The second question is receives an A grade in both statistics and mathematics. This is the question that is being asked. So, again we start what is the sample, what is the experiment here? I have a student who has written an exam. So, the outcome is the grades the student obtains in statistics and in 
mathematics. So, we can see that this I have a class and in this class I can find out what is the grades obtained by different students in the subjects or I given here. So, first what we do here is first we identify the events. How do we identify the events? So, again I go back I identify my event let S denote the event of a student obtaining of the student obtaining a, a grade in statistics. So, the first thing we identify is what is the event let S denote the event of obtaining an A grade in statistics this probability is given to me and that is given to me by this 40 percent I write that as 0.4. Similarly, the next thing which is given to me let me denote M to be the event of obtaining a A grade in mathematics. So, again I have probability of S is 0.4. I have probability of m is 0.6. Now, what does this mean receiving an A in either statistics or mathematics recall either statistics or mathematics is represented by the union of these two events and it is given probability of statistics or mathematics is 0.86. So, the information given to us is probability of receiving an A, a grade in statistics is 0.4, probability of receiving an A grade in mathematics is 0.6 and the probability of getting in either of the subjects is 0.86 which we recognize is the probability of the union of these two events. So, the first question that is being asked is what is the probability that the student does not receive an A in either statistics or mathematics. Again like we have done in the earlier problem the event that she does not receive an A is the complement of the event that the student receives an A in at least one of the subjects. She does not receive an either of the subjects is same as the complement that she receives in at least one of the subjects which is again S union M complement and again we apply the probability loss of probability to get that. So, the first thing we understand is the pro this is S union M complement and the second is receives an A in both statistics and mathematics is we know it is very simple it is nothing but the intersection of these two events. So, let us apply our probability properties or axioms to find out the probability. So, I have to find out what is the probability of S union M complement and probability of S intersection M that is what we need. So, this is probability S union M complement this is probability of S intersection M. Now, S union M complement is 1 minus probability of S union M this is what we know. So, we need to understand what is probability of S union M complement this I know is equal to 1 minus probability of S union M. But what is probability of S union M that is given to be 0 0.86 hence I have the probability of S union M complement is nothing but probability of 1 minus so that I have an 86 percent chance of either statistics or mathematics. So, I apply whatever I have to find out that probability of S union M complement is 0.14. Now, what is the next probability? The next probability is probability of S intersection M. Now, again recall S and M are not disjoint whatever addition rule says is probability of S union M is probability of S plus probability of M minus probability of S intersection M. This is what my addition rule says I have this probability, I have this probability, I have this probability I need to find out what this is. So, what I do is I can rewrite this addition rule as probability of S intersection M is probability of S plus probability of M 
minus probability of S union M. I have just rewritten my addition rule. I know probability of S is 0 0.4, I know probability of M is 0 0.6, I know probability of S union M is 0 0.86 to give me a 0 0.14 probability of the candidate receiving a A grade in both the subjects together. There is a 0 0.4 or a 14 percent chance that the candidate there is a 0 0.4 or a 14 percent chance that the candidate will get a A grade in both the subjects. So, these were examples of how you apply the addition rule. What we need to understand is we need to first identify the events given the scenario and then apply the addition rule.